a digging his hole, all in the ground, so big and sold around it wasn't there. Was I? What's transport? It's only down the road. Two quid. Oh. Here, when can you deliver? I'll have to pick me moment. I hope this is all above board. Of course. Mr Manley's only too pleased. Don't dig it there, dig it elsewhere. You're digging it round and it ought to be square. The shape of it's wrong, it's much too long and you can't put a hole where a hole don't belong. I ask, what a liberty, eh? Nearly bashing right in the bowler. What could you see if she's awake? Well, why not? Yes, I know it's early, but I've been trying to get hold of her for days. Well, could you ask her to ring me? Thank you. Yes. All right. Thanks. For nothing. Stupid old trout. Private call. Oh, dear Bellamy. Gina's still in Liverpool, I take it. Yes. Look, it's natural to feel anxious. You're at a big turning point in your life. Marriage, fatherhood. I mean, it's a huge thing for both of you, yes? Yes. So I'll say what I say to all my young officers. If you want to talk at any time, my door is open. I don't imagine you confide much in Dennis Martin. A Ashfordly Police! Ah, Miss Stanton. What can I do for you? Miss Stanton. The cross we have to bear, Sarge. Right. All right. OK. Yeah, I'll get back to you. What did she want this time? Uh, her cottage has been pervaded by a noxious odour. Oh, pervaded, eh? <laughs> well, off you go, then, Bellamy. See what's worrying her. And Ventress, just because she's female and unmarried, there's no need to mock. Tut, tut, tut. Yes. Well, we all know you're her pet. Well, actually, I think it's uh, Steve nowadays. Does he know? No. But perhaps somebody should warn him. And you didn't hear anything in the night? No, nothing. Well, where's it come from, Mr Script? I mean, who's put it there? David. I mean, why would anybody want to put that in front of your garage? Ha-ha! <laughs> it's arrived! I knew it. It looks good enough to eat. Do I take it this is your soil? You certainly can. Allow me to introduce you to my new business enterprise. Oh, please. Oh, Potting compost. Bernard, use your imagination. Put in little bags with a bit of peat and sharp sand. It'll sell like hotcakes. I don't want to know. I can already see the sign. B and V scripts. Garage, funeral services and purveyors of horticultural supplies. Just get it moved, will you? It's causing an obstruction. Yeah, and he's blocking my pumps. Yes, well, I've got to bag it up first. Vernon. <laughs> All right. David, go and get the shovel. Oh, no. He's with me today on funeral business. Yeah, but I... I... And, uh, quick as you can. Oh. Come on, girls. I've tried being civil. I've tried pointing out that he's destroying my peace and privacy. Well, all right, Miss Stanton. I appreciate you don't like the idea of a new house next door, but what's that got to do with this, er... Uh... Older. Well, isn't it obvious? It's him, isn't it? He's trying to get me out. Here he comes oh, now. Here he goes. I you asked me to come and see you, Miss Stanton? Yeah, uh, Miss Stanton's a bit concerned about this, uh, punk. Yes, I can smell it. She wonders if you might have severed her sewage pipe in the course of your building work. Of course he has. On purpose, I shouldn't wonder. OK. Why don't you go back inside and leave this to me, eh? Sever her pipe. What's she all about? For a start, her cesspit's over there. Look, it's nowhere near where I'm digging. But she's right about the smell, though. Blimey. I mean, I'm putting every penny I own into that house. The last thing I need is unpleasantness. It's really strong down here. Oh, 
It's getting stronger. It's terrible. Mr. Scripps, I put that heap exactly where you said. No, you didn't. I said round the back. Well, I'm not moving it. It's far too risky. What do you mean, too risky? Well, if I keep going down to the village in the digger, Mr. Manley will twig, won't he? I'm gone. I thought you said he knew about it. Yes, well, that was a slight exaggeration. So it wasn't yours to sell? No. Which is why you've got to go before Mr. Manley gets back. Oh, wonderful. So I've got a sucking great heap of nicked topsoil for all to see smack bang in the middle of the village. Tom Parrot, you better get that out of sight and fast. OK. But I'll need another father. Hi, it's old Buttercup. I was wondering where she'd got to. Still. Not a bad spot to end your days, is it? Best get it shifted, though, sir. It is pretty right. It's a disgrace, Mr. Formby. Soon as possible. OK? You all right, Miss Stanton? And it's made me ill. I shall have to see my doctor. Well, let's get right away from it, then, shall we? That's it. No more patients? No. Nope. Have you heard from Dennis yet? No, and I'm not expecting to, so I'll stop asking. I'm sorry, but surgery's over for this morning, I'm afraid. I need to see Dr Merrick. What? Can I make you an appointment for this afternoon? No, no, it's very urgent. I've been breathing in noxious gases for the last two days and I'm terribly worried. Hello, Miss Stanton. Come in and tell me all about it. I thought you were out on patrol. No, uh, I just popped in to see if Gina had found it. No. Were you sure? Phil, I've been here the whole day. All right. I just uh, left her a message to call me here, that's all. I don't think your auntie passes the messages on, you know. Maybe I should take a few days off. Pop over to Liverpool. I think you should give the girl a bit of breathing space. She's got a lot to think about. Having a baby. Having to give up her job to get married. <sighs> you make it sound like a prison sentence. We'd want to get married. At least I do. Beginning to wonder about her. Oh, Mr. Scripps, look! The heap's gone. She thinks so, too, cheek of it. Putting it right in front of the pumps like that. Now what's he done? Well, what are we going to do? I mean, how are we going to get Mr. Walter in? Careful. <laughs> What in there? Balance it on the edge. Ah! Sit! Ah. Come round here. Ah. 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 All right. All right, come on, give it, give it a good show. Okay. It's all going to look covered in the way. What on earth are you doing? I wouldn't mention Earth if I were you. What did you put it round here for? I can't get old Walter into the coal store, can I? With all that fatty out on him and in this warm weather. Oh, dear. I'll do it. Right, David. Oh, 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 o
You can push him back out again, Dave. We're never going to get him in this way. Well, what are we going to do? We can't leave him out here in the sun. Vernon's going to have to move his heap again, isn't he? wondering about you and her me and who don't you notice the way she looks at you no hmm. she fancies you don't be daft oh really she's got a weakness for the younger man well you want to ask anyone round the vision He'll tell you. phone. Gina, I left a message every day. Anyway, when are you coming back? Because you carry my child and I want to be with you, is that such a crime? No. I just want to know what's going on, Gina. I am not shouting, I am asking. Gina? hasn't gone. Miss Stanton, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Yes, but Mr Formby said it will be removed yesterday. I'll deal with it later. All right. Where the heck's Vernon? You think he could have given us a hand at the very least? He's at the doctor's. Oh, yes. What's he got? Shovel his elbow. Oh. Heat rash. Heat rash? He's the one with the blessed heat rash, I shouldn't wonder. Come on, in that door. When did you first notice it? <laughs> this morning. After getting all hot and sweaty yesterday, moving yet uh, something. You feel all right in yourself, though, do you? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll give you something to put on it. And if it gets any worse, you come back to me, all right? If you want to go through and wait. Good morning. Hello, my lotion. Mm, he's got a rush. Still no word from Dennis, then. How many more times, Liz? He can't phone because he's at a conference and it would be really difficult for him. Right. He's not on the phone again. Oh, I. You see, if she decides not to come back, I'm going to need a new licensee. Well, you'll need one either way, Oscar. Because if she comes back, it'll be to get married and she'll have to leave anyway. Oh, well, that's not fair. Why did she have to go just because of that? David. Well, I, I like Gina and, well, I don't really mind that she's getting married. Not your Mr Blaketon should. It's not me, David. It's police regulations. Ah, Bellamy. Any luck? No. I just got through to her auntie again. I only wanted to apologise for shouting at her, but no, it's... <laughs> Mr Vernon, he's been shouting at me and he hasn't apologised either. Oh, when he's in a right mad mood. I mean, it's not my fault that he's got a rash. Rash my foot. Malingering more like it's because he doesn't want to move that wretched heap. Sorry, I have to call you out, Doctor. Mm, that's quite all right. Open up. Now, let's have a look at this rash, then. 
Oh, hello, Doctor. Hello, David. Vernon's not feeling too well. Yeah, and a fat lot of good you were when I needed you. Well, so I was only down the pub. I should call the doctor out on my own, didn't I? Well, so I didn't know you were ill. Mm, you're right, it is getting a bit worse. It seems to be forming blisters. That's why I think it must be sunstroke. Sunstroke? Come on, David, I'm talking to Dr Merrick. Well, how could it be sunstroke? You're right, you are a bit feverish. I mean, that's one of the main signs, isn't it? And I did take my shirt off when I was working. Well, there wasn't any sun. <laughs> David, I am ill! It was cloudy! All right, boys, no arguing. Now, I have to say I agree with David. I don't think it's sunstroke. But I'm sure it's nothing serious. <laughs> whoever he might be, and I certainly don't want Constable Bellamy, who's been most unhelpful. I've got two dead cows at the bottom of my garden. I want to see the man in charge. Can I help? No, you cannot. I want an interview with the senior officer at this station. That's me. Would you like to come through? Talk about a narrow escape. Radio Bellamy, will you tell him to meet me up at Miss Stanton's place with the farmer? Come on in, Crane. We'll deal with this together. What did I tell you? I didn't mean to shout. No, I'm sorry. I just want to know where I stand, that's all. Hmm? No, it's my radio. Look, I'm going to have to go. I'll phone you again, yes? Oh, and Gina. Gina? I love you. Yes, Alf. Enjoying Aidan's field cream? Yes, Sergeant. Not too quiet? No. Good. A lot of men your age would miss the bright lights. Yeah. What is your age, by the way? Right at the drive, Sergeant. Yes. Come oh, on. It's Dr. Merrick. Problems, Doctor. Miss Stanton is on the verge of a nervous collapse. And I can't say I blame her. So you're not going to tell me then? Sorry? Your age. Never mind. Solid. What's that? Leave me alone. Poor old dear. I had to give her a mild sedative. Stay here, Crane. When the vet comes, send him straight over. I'd like your opinion. All this silly fuss. Calling police out. Well, there's livestock, there's dead stock. Any farmer will tell you that. Or well, maybe. But it's pretty unsettling for Miss Stanton. Especially now there are two. I'm going to move them all in good time. Just as soon as I find out what they died of. I don't believe it. She hasn't called the doctor, has she? Have you seen it before? Once. If that's what it is. And you? I don't know. Maybe this morning. In one of my patients. Hello there. 
Dr. Merrick, I presume. Good to meet at last. I've heard so much about you. Do you want to come and see it? Would you... Wait one moment, Mr. Formby. Why? When you saw that first dead animal two days ago, did you not call the bet? Well, Mr. Thornby... Mr. Thornby, Thornby, Thornby thought. You never, ever take the farmer's word. Always double-check. I'm not too happy with you at the moment, young man. Your mind's not on your work at all, is it? Let me see the other one. Yep, same again. Black blood from the orifices, blood in the dung, swollen glands. Classic symptoms, I'm afraid. Are you sure? It's pretty unmistakable. I suggest we all get out of here immediately. These cattle have anthrax. Anthrax? Dr. Merrick! Get back, please! Dr. Merrick! It's Mr. Vernon. He's, he's going all black. what it looks like. But we're not certain yet. Well, cows are small together. And people. What's that? It's an antibiotic. It's very important we get treatment started as soon as possible. Now, just hold still. He's all yours. No. No. And before you go, let's have a think about what I said earlier. Have you been anywhere near Clive Formby's cattle? Have you been in his fields or, or anywhere near his farm? Don't leave well? me, David. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll come and see Mr. Vernon as soon as I can. Eh? you this, Mr. Form Me. It's called a Form A, and it notifies you that you have an anthrax outbreak on your farm. No, I don't understand. It means you can't move off your farm until you and your livestock are out of quarantine. No, I don't understand how they got it. Well, the usual carriers of the disease are imported feedstuffs or bone meal. I'm telling you, I've not got either on my farm. Okay, and um, maybe they were here in the soil all the time from an earlier outbreak, and something's brought them to the surface. But there's never been an outbreak. Not in my time, no, me dads, no, me granddads. I'd know if they're had. I mean, what about me other cows? Will they get it? We'll have to keep a close eye on them, naturally, but let's hope not. I'm afraid cutting open that first cow was the very worst thing you could have done. Once you release anthrax bacteria into the air, they form thousands of spores, which are almost impossible to get rid of. And I would have been right by them, wouldn't I? Them spore things. I mean, might I catch it? Come along, Mr. Formby. Doctor will be giving you a blood test. I wouldn't worry. Look, why don't you go back home and make yourself a nice cup of tea? Anthrax? David said that's what it was. I didn't believe him. I'm afraid he was right. Vernon's got anthrax. Anthrax? No. The cutaneous variety, luckily. Only on the skin. He should be fine. Well, how did he catch it? Well, that's the big puzzle. I mean, we've had two more cases today in the cattle. Cattle? Uh, up at Clive Formby's farm. Well, what's Vernon got to do with cattle? He hates the things. Well, it can't just be coincidence now, can it? I mean, what's he been up to recently? Well, nothing. Uh, just this stupid potting compost thing. I'm sorry? Yeah, he's bought this great big pile of earth put into bags for people's gardens. Well, it's a right pain, actually, because we've got old Mr Walter... Yeah, yeah, all right, David, yeah, no need to share it with the whole world. Can I see this earth? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Where did he get it? Well, he never said, did he? Nope. Hang on. I saw the digger that came to shift this off the road. Yes? Well, I reckon it was the same bloke who was working on that building site. Next to Miss Stanton's. Excuse me. It's confirmed. The boffins pulled their finger out immediately and got a result. The two cows definitely had it. 
And I think I may just have found a connection between them and my patient. Really? Yes. But first I need to speak to whoever owns the plot next to Miss Stanton. His name's Manley. Why don't we go together? You better hop in. All right, Crane. Yes, Sergeant. Aren't you bored? Sergeant Noakes! I think Dr. Merrick wants to see you, Sergeant. Sergeant Noakes! Your patch, Crane. Stay with me. We're going to see Mr. Manley. I think you ought to be there. So my top saw to a man in the village. No fear. You got the wrong man entirely. It's here, look. All ready for our new garden. Lovely stuff. Rocks and stones. No topsoil at all. What the Tom? Are you telling me that my soil ended up at Aidensfield Garage and that's how Vernon Scripps caught anthrax? It's a possibility. What, so the germs just flew off Clive Formby's cattle there and onto my ground? Or were here to start with. What? Say there was a case of anthrax here before. The bacteria could have lain dormant in the soil and sprung to life when you disturbed it. Some could have washed down the stream and infected Clive Formby's cattle. Others would have been in the load of topsoil Tom Parrott sold. Oh, here they are. And there's Miss Stanton worrying herself sick. I better tell her what's going on. Excuse me. I might as well go too. But this place was an orchard. I've got it in the deeds. It couldn't have anthrax in it, surely. Nevertheless, I'd get your daughters back in the car, sir. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Please, Miss Stanton, open up. No one's coming in this house till I know why that horrible disease came from. That's what we've come to explain. The latest theory We're is... We're just th testing, Miss Stanton. We don't know anything for certain yet. And the latest theory is what, exactly? Well, that Mr Manley's plot could be the source. That's why we've got men up there now taking soil samples. I knew it. I knew that man would bring trouble. Well, I agree with Mr Manley. If the place was always an orchard... Yes, but was it? That's what I want you to find out. There must be plenty of old maps in the public records office. That's in North Allerton. Well, get yourself to North Allerton, then. Goodness, Ventress, you're not welded to that seat, I hope. Yeah. Not sufficient. Well, then. Yeah. No, we must have an old map somewhere. Never mind about that. Oh, yes, we have. A good one. It, it shows everything. I wonder where it is now. Uh, the thing is, when Sergeant Craddock joined us, he made me throw out all the old stuff. We had a huge bonfire, I remember, out the back. Ventress. I saved some of the things, and I'm pretty sure that the map's amongst them. So where is it now? Well, uh, I had to hide everything from Sergeant Craddock. So? It's in my hiding place. Which is? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a hiding place. Find it, Ventress, or get yourself to North Allerton. The choice is yours. Sorry, Bernie. But my orders are nothing in, nothing out. Not until we know if that soil's infected. Excuse me, could you move right back, please? What about Mr Walter? Thanks, Vernon. Thanks a lot. 
I mean, how are we going to bury him if we can't get him out? Oh, David, will you shut up? Whole thing's a complete shambles. I've got my body in there, my hearse out here. What am I supposed to do? Oh, heck. I'm sorry, everybody. The funeral's off. <laughs> Warns us not allowed out. Well, that's it. I've turned this place upside down and I can't find that map here. I'm giving up now. And I tell you what, I'm not going to Dothalaton. No way. <laughs> By the way, uh, Gina called. When? Uh, we were over in Aidensfield. <sighs> Telephone. Oh, no, no. <laughs> she's out. That's what she phoned about. Uh, she's uh, gone to Rill with her cousin. She said, um... Yeah? Hang on. What? Alf, she said what? Oh, I wrote it down somewhere. Come on, Alf, where? It is. Uh, she said uh, she'd uh, phone you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the pub. Well, didn't she say anything else? Well, I gather she'd made up her mind what she's going to do. And? She didn't say. Alf! I need to know. Did... This is driving me nuts. Hello, oh, Mr. Vernon. Are you looking for you? What's wrong with him? Why is he shaking like that? Riggers, sister said. Riggers? Hey, he's not dying, is he? Just leaving it. Not now, they're not for definite. Mr. Manley's place was badly infected as well. Yeah, they're running alive. Apparently, they're thinking of burying the whole plot in rubble. Ask Mr. Vernon, Doctor. Did you phone the hospital? Yes, and he's very much better. Oh, that's a relief. It certainly is. He's very lucky, considering the state of that heap. State of the what? You've had the results back, have you? Just. I'm afraid they confirm what we thought. The soil samples taken from here and Mr. Manley's both have tested positive. Highly contaminated, the exact words. Highly contaminated? With anthrax here in the garage. <laughs> Mr. Scripps, your neck. What? Oh, it's got black blobs on it. Where? Here he is again. Just can't keep away. Morning, Jenny. Hello, Andrew. Morning, Liz. Goodness, you've a full house today? <laughs> mm, quite. Well, everyone's just so worried, you know, especially now it's all being confirmed. Still, no one else seems to be getting it so far. All the blood tests came back negative. Great, and no sign of any more cattle going down, so uh, if we can get through the next two or three days, we might be OK. Let's hope so. It's a fascinating subject, though, isn't it? Zoonoses. Yes. Yes, it is. In fact, that's really why I'm here. Because we both work in the same area, I thought it might be a good idea to sort out a common policy. Right. Perhaps we could set up a meeting. Yes. Why not? Um, I'm really sorry, but I have to get on. I'll ring you, shall I? Yes. And what's a zoonosis? A disease that can be passed from animals to humans. Ah, oh, and he wants to set up a policy meeting. Sweet. Well, at least he wants to communicate, unlike some people. Well, I do wonder a little bit why Dennis hasn't rung. I mean, not even once, Liz. Your husband, Jenny, is a policeman. Uh, the job comes first, wives come second. Recite daily and inwardly digest. I know, I know. Mrs Corbishley, please. Jenny, I've got black marks on my neck like Vernon had. Right, you better come through. Show me. 
fuzzy hands. Oil burning, not anthrax. I've got it. The map that I was looking for. Come and have a look at it. Yes, Mrs Ventress had it all along. Mrs Ventress? She was using it to line her tool drawer, so it's a bit worse for wear. Ah, now, see? 1872. It's nearly 100 years old. Come and have a squint at this, Sarge. What is it? Aidensfield. Uh, Miss Stanton's cottage, and uh, have a look, see what Mr. Manley's place was. A tannery? That's right. A hundred years ago, Mr. Manley's place was a tannery. Well, well, well. Cremate him? Yes. But well, we've just dug the hole in the churchyard next to his missus. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bernie, but the coffin could be contaminated. But it's going to be buried. Yeah, but it might be dug up. Dug up? Whoever in the world would want to dig up old Walter? I'm oh, sorry about this, Bernard. It's not me. It's public health. So what am I going to tell the family? Well, I don't know. Just tell them there's a health risk, so it's got to be cremation. Bernie, I wouldn't argue about this. Otherwise, they won't let him out at all and he'll be stuck in your chiller forever. A tannery? A long time ago, Mr Manley. It closed in 1890. And the trouble is, in those days, tanneries were well known for carrying anthrax. Imported hides brought in the disease, bits of hide got buried on site. But we're talking about 70 or 80 years ago. Ah, oh, yes. But it can remain active a lot longer than that. Look, I've had a word with the scientists, and unfortunately... What? Well, it seems now that you've brought it to the surface, it will be very, very hard to get rid of. What are you trying to say? The site won't be safe to build on, sir. I can't build my house. I don't think so, sir. It wouldn't be allowed. I'm so sorry. Must be a dreadful blow. Good news, Miss Stanton. It seems I won't be disturbing your peace after all. There'll be no house next door. Poor fellow. I felt very sorry for him, didn't you? Yeah. Still, looks as if we've managed to keep the outbreak contained. Yep. Do try to relax, Craig. Sorry, Sergeant. Perhaps you're overdoing things. It's your day off tomorrow, isn't it? Yes. Well, there you are, then. A chance to wind down. Got any plans? No. Nope. Well, at least I might have, yeah. Do I take it you're courting? No. Well, yes and no. <laughs> no, well, yes and no. Which is it? Um, no. You're a jumpy sort of lad, aren't you? Sorry. Is it me? No. You mustn't be so shy. I'm not going to bite. You're a nice boy. Thanks. A nice boy who should find himself a nice girl. Although with this shyness of yours, perhaps you need someone who can take the lead. An older woman might do the trick. Could you stop a moment, Sergeant? Sorry, I've just remembered something. Something I left behind at Mr Manley's. Well, that's miles back. I like walking. <laughs> Get in. You idiot crane. You didn't honestly think I was offering, did you? <laughs> oh, you're far too green for me, my lad. Far too green. Ta-da! Oh. Can I come in? Actually, I was just about to put my feet up. Excellent. The perfect time for our little chat about zoonosis. Excuse me. Who? Where? All right, I'll be straight over. All right, Alf. I'm awfully sorry, Andrew. I'm the local police surgeon and that was a call out to a sudden death. How absolutely fascinating. Can I come?
No, 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 don't take me yet. I'm not ready to go. Calm down, Mr Scripps. I don't want to go yet. Don't be so silly. It's your brother. And he was doing so well, I can't imagine what all the fuss is about. Oh, it's all right, Mr Vernon. It's me, Bernie. we just come from the crematorium. Yeah, my Mr Walters had to be cremated. Oh, oh hello, Bernard. I've just had a terrible out-of-body experience. Yeah, well, you might have another one when you get home. That heap you dumped on me's lost me five days' sales at the garage and three funerals. I should be wanting compensation. Uh, 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 I'm too ill to see anyone. Sister, 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 send them away. Send them away. There he is. Do we know who he is? Not yet, no. I do. He's Mr Manley's digger driver, the man who stole the topsoil. Doctors said I was a walking miracle not getting it. I mean, I cut that beast open with my bare hands. And that was the most dreadful risk. You're very lucky. Not lucky, young lady. Clever. I use me loaf. Oh, aye, right, so what is Clive Formby's secret anti-anthrax treatment, then? Sheep dip. Sheep dip? But that's a deadly poison, an organophosphate. Exactly. Kills everything. I put it on all over for maximum effect. All over? Oh, Clive, that was really, really stupid. I didn't get anthrax, though, did I? Sheep dip wouldn't have made the slightest difference to that, and you could have been... Hey, Bellamy, come on in. Half an hour to go, just in time for a bit of Dutch courage. Oh, no. I won't be touching a drop. Thanks for coming along. It was a great help that you knew who he was. Glad to be of use. Fancy a meal? That's very kind. On me, of course. We could talk the whole thing through. Look... Please say yes. I've been dying to ask you out since we first met. I find you awfully attractive. And admire you. Tremendously. I'd be honoured. I'm really sorry. Oh. Right. Sorry. I just thought it worth a try. Oh. Ooh. Two minutes to go. If she rings. She will. Oh, come on. It's only Gina. You're not going to your execution. It feels like it. My whole life could depend on this phone call. Well, oh, that's a bit uh, melodramatic, isn't it? Not really, Oscar. Well, it's either happiness or misery, isn't it? I mean, her staying in Liverpool or coming back here, just getting married, having the baby, and being a proper mum and dad. That's what's at stake. I have just had the most embarrassing time. What's up? Phil's waiting for his phone call. I love this spot. I was going to bring up my girls here. Try to make up for the loss of their mother. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. A country idyll. That's what it was going to be. And it's hardly that anymore, is it? The dream has been well and truly shattered. And dreams usually are, I suppose. Look, I don't have a family, and that house is far too big for me. No. Oh. No, it's your spot. You enjoy it. 
I was only an interloper. You take it. Yes. All right, I'll get him. Have a look. I'll take it and Hello, Gina. Steve Crane, he's one of yours, isn't he? He's the real father of my baby. But if my daughter's been raped by a copper, there's no way I'm going to let you cover it up. You're mine, copper. <laughs> 